Joining us now, senior writer at Politico and co-author of The Playbook, Jake Sherman. He's an MSNBC political contributor and Axios political reporter and an MSNBC contributor. Alexei McCammon joins us. So, Jake, um, if you take out the joke he made at the top, uh, I guess one couldn't have too much of an issue with what the secretary of state said. Your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know if it was a joke or not. Here's what I would say, Mika, and we wrote this in Playbook this morning. Um, there is a nobody in Washington, no Republican that I have found who actually believes Donald Trump won this election. Nobody believes that tens of thousands of votes in multiple states are going to be overturned. This is all performance art, and it's dangerous performance art at that. I mean, take uh, the Secretary of State, for example. I mean, there are Foreign Service officers across the world who are in, in dangerous places right now who have to answer for this kind of stuff. And, and I just wonder what they are thinking. He would have a better pulse on that mm -hmm. than I would. But this is all from the Senate to the House to the administration. Nobody believes Donald Trump won this election. And you guys were talking about looking for jobs on the front end. Joe is right. The entire administration, Alexi knows this well. Everybody's looking for a job. They all know they're out of a job in a couple weeks. So we're watching a movie that is being constructed, that is being uh, uh, that is unfolding because people want to make Donald Trump happy. That's what this is. And I don't, when will it end? I don't know. I don't understand the strategy, so to speak here, right? He's going to lose most every challenge. So when that happens, does, is, this, is the theory going to be that the entire country, every state government and every state court is colluding against him? I, I mean, I just, I don't think there is a strategy and I think it's all kind of goofy. Hey, Jake, Chris Coons, senator, Democratic senator of uh, Delaware, said yesterday in an interview that Republicans are saying to him, because he knows that they know he's close with Joe Biden, Republican senators are saying to him, tell Joe Biden congratulations. I'm not allowed to say it. Does that ring true to you? Totally. A thousand percent. A lot of these people know Joe Biden, not as many as Joe Biden would like you to think because he's been out of the Senate for 12 years. But these people know him. I mean, people like uh, Richard Shelby, a veteran Republican from Alabama, who said yesterday, you know, uh, brushed aside whether he had talked to him and said he didn't need to talk to him or some some variation of that. I mean, these people served with him for 30 years in some cases. So, of course, they're there. It would make sense that they're sending their well wishes because Donald Trump is losing in every state that's under that he's claiming he might win it. So, I mean, sometimes it's good to ground ourselves back in reality reality and understand that the, that there's no feasible way at this point that we can understand based on the information at hand that Donald Trump has won this election. I mean, I, I'm sorry to laugh. I'm laughing with you, Willie, because the, the contention here is so bizarre. And we walked through a few minutes ago the vote spreads in those states that they're contending, as you point out. It's just not close in most of them. Um, Jonathan Lemire, the president is the one person who took M Mike Pompeo seriously, perhaps, in what I guess is being portrayed as a joke. I don't quite get the joke, but very dry. Maybe not going to get him a Netflix special off that. But the, the, the tweet from Donald Trump where he said this is why Mike Pompeo was first in his class at West Point. That was a signal from Mike Pompeo to one man, the audience of one Donald Trump, and he took it as serious. That's right. That's the phrase, audience of one, that we have used so often in the last four years, Willie, and that's what this moment clearly was. Uh, yeah, the Secretary of State, maybe he was joking, um, but Donald Trump didn't think it was a joke. Uh, and this is clearly the Secretary of State trying to keep the boss happy um, in the short term, um, being not wanting to be an advisor that crosses him here, not wanting to be someone uh, who is seen as contradicting the President of the United States. But of course, Pompeo is has his own political ambitions. He's widely thought of uh, entertaining his own presidential run in 2024, and he wants to keep Donald Trump happy. He doesn't want that tweet coming down uh, to scuttle his own bid, uh, perhaps in the Republican primaries and uh, as he barnstorms across Iowa and New Hampshire in late uh, 2023, where there's certainly an assumption if President Trump isn't running again himself, at the very least, potentially playing the role of kingmaker, at least that's what he hopes. Uh, but yeah, I think that though we should take a step, half step back and just note, what sort of signal is this sending to the rest of the world? When And let, let's take a thought of what would, this, what would we think if this was happening in a different nation, if this was a foreign minister of a different state making a similar joke about a leader trying to hold on to power after he had been 
defeated in a fair and free election. There'd be alarm bells in Foggy Bottom. State Department would be saying this is a crisis and we need to monitor closely. And I think that's the message that a lot of the world is showing right now. And Joe Biden certainly is projecting confidence and calm. And a lot of our allies seem to be drawing some strength and reassurance from that. Uh, but to be honest, this is no laughing matter, despite uh, Mike Pompeo's uh, ill-advised attempt at very dry humor. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.